I'm here at CMTS, the biggest manufacturing trade show in Canada. Some very interesting new technologies to check out and some very interesting people to talk to, things to learn. So let's get in there and check it out. So my first stop at the trade show was to the 3D Printing Canada booth. I wanted to go check out the new 3D printer that I'm most interested in, which is the Bamboo H2S. It's a single head version of the H2D, comes in at a lower price point, but it has a lot of the upgraded features of the H2D and the larger build volume. Let's see what Matt has to say about it. Hey, Matt here from 3D Printing Canada, and we are at CMTS. And today I'm showing off the H2S. It is the newest printer from Bamboo Lab. Now, one of the big selling features of this is actually what it's missing. So it is only a single nozzle rather than two, like the H2D, but that comes at a much reduced price. It's $1,000 cheaper, but still has that big size and pretty much the same frame as the H2D. So you get that bamboo quality in a big format. I ran into Jason representing Big Rep, and he was showing off the Vio 250 large format 3D printer. Hi, my name is Jason. I am the head of marketing for the Americas here at Big Rep, and we are showing off the Vio 250 here at CMTS. One of the main reasons that we like to show it, particularly with a manufacturing environment, is we designed this machine to be as user-friendly as possible in the industrial equipment sphere. Typically, what you have to do in a slicer is you have to set all of these nested all in one job. Well, with this, you can just send one part at a time and reorient this and it'll automatically put it on the bed where it's gonna fit. Key things that I like to point out are uh, auto calibration, a lot of the auto sensing, there are multiple sensors built into this. We have these giant filament storage cabinets that are underneath the system that are also actively feeding it into the extruder that holds up to 32 kgs of material. So if you're printing big parts, you can feel confident that you're not gonna run out of material at any point. We have a couple parts here. This is one that we printed here at the show. This is uh, essentially a manifold that is used by a NASCAR team. And they're printing these on a weekly basis and it's saved them a bunch of money, took only about a day and is an actual end use part that is being used. And then we have this material here. So this is nylon 12 with carbon fiber built into it. We really like to show this part because it shows uh, what a raw part looks like and then also what you can do with just a little bit of post-processing on it. So this is just a basic sanding with a layer of epoxy resin on there to really smooth things out, get all those layers filled, and then a coat of paint. The 3D Printing Canada booth had these really nice curvy tables that I found out were actually 3D printed. So I had a chat with Garrett, who was there to represent Caracol, and gave us a little explanation of their large format 3D printing technology. Hello, my name is Garrett Harmon, and I'm here representing Caracol AM with 3D Printing Canada at CMTS 2025. I really like to go over our technology here from Caracol AM. We do a pellet extruder mounted to a six axis Kuka robotic arm. And what this does is it allows us to print much larger parts with a larger layer height and a larger bead width. So instead of focusing on fine parts and detail, we focus on large parts and functionality for industries like tooling and architecture and design. So for example, for this large tool here, instead of printing with a quarter of a millimeter to a half millimeter layer height, we're printing with a five millimeter layer height and 15 millimeter bead width. This lets us print large tools, just like this carbon fiber autoglaving tool, to print it within 15 hours, get it machined the next day, and then with, within a week, we're able to print the full tool and start to get some carbon fiber parts out of the tool. This makes a lot of sense for customers who are doing short run parts that need the tool quick so they can rapidly prototype anything from carbon fiber to trim and dye tools, uh, as well as any other large architecture facades or concrete formworks tools. And because we print large format parts, the name of the game is finishing, whereas with FDM, we're focused on small parts with high levels of detail with high temperature polymers. With large format, we're focused on large parts that we're then going to finish to net shape afterwards. So in this case, just like this autoclaving tool where we can hit it with an end mill and a five axis CNC to finish the part in the mold to net shape, we also have this mock-up for this rear tail light panel this has been finished with a traditional automotive process where this ABS CF, we can also do it with a PA CF or a nylon CF, has been hand sanded, primed, coated, and painted to an automotive level finish. And this can be done for anything from these rear taillight panels to the front panels for larger trams, as well as for car hoods or car bumpers. It's really kind of mind blowing that we're at the point now where 
you can 3D print something like a car bumper, sand it down, paint it, and that can be used as a production part. There was some really impressive SLS titanium printing on display at the Go Engineer booth. Let's see what Sheldon had to say about it. Hello, my name is Sheldon from Go Engineer. Right now we have a piece of Inconel 718 printed in one piece from Bright Laser Technology. It's the first time we have this part on the exhibition and definitely grab a lot of attention. So all this, uh, including the flaps, are all made with one single print. It took 164 hours. And this is a piece that's actually used in the Airbus. This is not the piece itself, but it's a demonstration of what we can achieve with laser powder bed fusion as of 2025. So definitely excited to see what other parts can be made with this technology and what does the future hold for Canadian manufacturing. So I headed on over to the Stratasys booth where they were showing off their Polyjet technology. And now Polyjet's been around for quite a few years. The quality and resolution that comes off of these machines is honestly unbelievable. The first thing I noticed when I walked up to the booth, <laughs> funny enough, I thought somebody left a snack on the display counter, but turns out it was a fully 3D printed banana. And this banana was honestly photorealistic in person. And even the texture of the skin of the banana was like almost exactly what you would expect at the grocery store. The giveaway though was the sticker, which wasn't glossy as you would expect. The sticker was printed in the same smooth texture as the rest of the banana. Polyjet's the technology, and specifically when we're printing on a fabric like this, we call it textile. It's the same Polyjet technology, it's been around for uh, over a decade at this point, but what we're doing, and this specifically, is we're printing onto fabric rather than printing onto itself. And how it works is similar to how you would have a paper printer and you have uh, magenta, cyan, yellow, white, black, and clear. It basically blends those colors of the photo resin as it goes through the printer layer by layer, and then creates you know, in Z, whatever pattern you tell it. And that's how you're able to get some of these pretty intricate and pretty detailed, otherwise very difficult patterns to be printed. They had this head that was fully 3D printed all in one go and this eyeball, again, fully 3D printed. And don't get me started on this slice of pizza. Crazy that we keep printing it burning the bottom. They left me with this token. It's a high enough resolution that they're able to print QR code. I made a quick stop at the Wyon Robotics booth mostly because their booth just looked really nice and I wanted to take a closer look. They just had a few demo cells of like pick and place operations and this one welding setup. And along the way, I came across this robotic dog that was walking up and down the trade show and these guys gave me a chance to control it myself and have a little fun. Let me show you. This is to move it, front, back, turn, crab walk. All right, I'm in control of the robot dog now. Oh, I think I'm going backwards. From integralequipment.com. What's his name, guys? Rocky. Rocky. He'd be a very obedient pet to have in the hole. Okay, attacked. Ah. <laughs> He's got very fine control. Very smooth. Good boy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, brother. They were also sharing a booth with Agile, showing off their 3D scanning technology that was mounted to a robot arm. Then I ran into Michael over at shop3d.ca and he was showing off the Formlabs Form 4 SLA printer. Hey, I'm Michael from shop3d.ca here at CMTS and we've got our Formlabs Form 4 printer right here. SLA or resin printing is a really cool technology. It takes a liquid photopolymer uh, and uses UV light to turn it into a solid such as these parts here. Compared to the more well-known FDM printers, SLA can produce higher quality parts without the weakness along the layer lines. So today in front of me, I have some examples of some stuff that we use for pressure molding, some high temperature materials as well, and very squishy Silicon 40A. What's so exciting about the Formlabs Form 4 is not only the speed, but also the power of its lighting array. It's giving you a wide access to a number of different materials that aren't available on other systems. And with Formlabs' specialized resins, you're able to print very quickly and very easily. There's no tuning for exposure time or lift rate or any of that stuff. So if you're interested, come check us out. We're located in Mississauga and in Vancouver, shop3d.ca. Creaform was there with a large booth as usual, showing off their new HandyScan Max, which is a larger format handheld 3D scanning device. And this device does live meshing on large parts like the front end of this truck here. So I'm here with Creaform. We've been around since 2005, roughly. We make different 3D scanning products. We're based in Quebec City, so it's uh, all Canadian products here. We're here with the HandyScan Max. This is one of our several HandyScan products. 
This one's good for more of a longer range type scan. And what this allows us to capture is the geometry of a part in real time. So it does live meshing. And from there, usually we'll do reverse engineering or quality control on whatever surface we've acquired. This is a new technology we came out with a year and a half or so ago. So we're exploring different distances to scan different resolutions as well. But this is a great product for large industrial equipment, agriculture, those types of products or surface scans as well. One thing I totally did not expect to see at this trade show was the Hacksmith was showing off one of their latest projects. My name is Bogdan Malinowski and I'm here with Hacksmith Industries at the Mitotoyo booth showcasing our Fallout Power Armor. So this is a full body, fully functioning exoskeleton that is powered by pneumatics. It's actually got an integrated power system on the back that uses a two kilowatt air compressor and a two and a half kilowatt gas generator to run all the pneumatics. The suit actually opens up from the back, allows you to step inside of it, closes up around you, and then allows you to lift uh, or curl 300 pounds or squat up to 2,000 pounds. As well, it also has an integrated pair of augmented reality goggles with night vision, thermal vision, and zoom vision built into the helmet. And we're currently working on making it bulletproof. So if you're curious about that, check out Hacksmith Industries to see more about this project. I also got to check out their new Smithblade multi-tool, which was cool to see in person. And it's a very cleverly designed multi-tool that has a flip blade like a modern pocket knife. And this right here is a product we recently released, which is our Smith Blade. It's a 21-in-1 titanium multi-tool featuring a high-quality M390 blade and a full 21 tools, including a fully integrated screwdriver that fits inside of the actual handle, a ratcheting mechanism, which is actually a 15-degree protractor, a file on the back, bottle opener, nail puller, pry bar, as well as a flint striker on the back, bubble level, metric and imperial rulers, and the scribe glass breaker on the back. So if this is something that you think is cool, make sure to check out our channel, link down below. <laughs> it's a very creative design with thoughtful multi-tool features, and I'd love to get one of these for myself at some point. Definitely go check it out if that's something you're interested in. The link's down below. Appreciate it. You as well, have a wonderful day. So that was CMTS 2025. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the next one.